And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Isaac Martin, who's the director of product at Glassbox and who will be your workshop facilitator today. Isaac, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Lisa, and I'm happy to be here. Welcome, everybody. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, the subject of the workshop is data-driven product managers and how we can leverage AI for CX, CX insights. Um, my name is Isaac. I've been a product uh, director, actually. This should have been updated on Glassbox for two years now. Um, let's talk a little bit about Glassbox. So Glassbox helps make your customer's digital experience better and how we do this. So we capture 100% of all your customers' digital journeys on web and mobile. We help you visualize everything that's happening in a friendly, intuitive UI. We use AI and machine learning to identify struggles and surface insights for you and recommend the appropriate actions so you can elevate your customer uh, experience, improve conversion, and uh, retention in your product. Um, these are some recent awards and accolades that we received in 2024. Continuously, year over year, we're getting the same ones. Um, a little bit of an introduction to Miro. In the chat, you should have a link to this uh, Miro, um, Miro presentation, slides. Every now and then, I'll click this magic button that brings everybody to us. You have the hand tool that will help you move around, or you can right-click, and that will make the same effect. And at some points, we will have questions, and you can vote on them. So just use the arrow to drag objects to the, um, to the answers that are most relevant to you. And also feel free to add your own. You'll be able to see it once we get to those questions on the list. And let's start by practicing. So the first thing we want to know is what is your role? If you scroll down a little bit below, you'll see you have a bunch of roles and you have the blank sticky notes so you can add your own. Just grab a dot um, and drag it to the relevant dot, relevant uh, sticky note like I just, just like I did just here. I'd expect that most of everyone here are product managers or product people, UX designers. You're also part of products. I'm happy to see you here. And if you don't see your role, then feel free to just double click any sticky note right here and add your own. We'd love to get to know you. And this is just the first exercise. So we get to know how Mirror is working. And soon we'll talk about the agenda. So I see we have a vast majority of product managers and product owners. I'm happy to see that. Um, moving on to the next question. So since, oh, sometimes it jumps. So we want to know how are you using Gen AI today? Uh, in, could be in your product, could be on your day-to-day -day work. Um, maybe you haven't even started using it. So today will be a perfect uh, presentation for you. We'd love to know what are the use cases that are interesting. And if something is not written here, then feel free to add it, uh, add your own. I'll just help bring everybody here to make it easier. And like Lisa mentioned, this is supposed to be an interactive workshop. So feel free to work with me, ask questions. Um, uh, let's make it, let's make the most out of it. We do have a lot of content, and at the end of the presentation, we have uh, several case studies that we're going to walk you through, and we will give you um, a document with predefined uh, prompts for Gen AI, like ChatGPT or Claude, that you can just use, and you'll be able to download it on your own, copy-paste, fill in the blanks. We'll talk about that a little later in the presentation, so stick around for that. I'm happy to see that the majority are using it as expected for emails, user stories, PRD creation. This is great to hear. I do the same thing. This is, this aligns with most of my usage. Slack summaries, I love that actually. People talk a lot on Slack. I would love for it to have an automated integration. Just summarize the channel. I don't need to read 13 notifications. That's amazing. And I see one on code debugging. I thought whether to add in or not the product manager, but some of us are technical product managers. So I see at least one person is using it for code debugging. That's great. Educational content, that's awesome. So I think there's 
already a trend that we can see here. PRD, user stories, emails, content, competitive analysis, those are great. I agree, those are probably the best use cases that we can use. And we're gonna see a couple of more on our uh, slide today. So let me click our magic button again and bring you all to me. So today's agenda, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, an introduction to AI and product management, a little bit about the landscape. Then we're gonna talk about how enhancing, how we can enhance digital customer experience and uncover insights using AI. We're gonna follow that with practical applications and case studies. And we're gonna uh, finish with a, your essential toolkit at the end, we have uh, an area for feedback and we'd love to hear from you and you can write it in the chat. You don't have to wait to the end of the presentation of what interests you, what you'd like to see more, uh, anything that you can share with us would be great so we can tailor the next workshops for you and make sure that they're interesting. A lot of this workshop has been tailored based on feedback from the previous workshop. So let's start with introduction to uh, AI and product management. Um, you can see here a nice little infographic. We're going to go back to that a little bit later. So we're hearing a lot about um, large language models and Gen AI everywhere now. And when we look at the data, it took under five days for ChatGPT to get to 1 million users. And it's because users found value really quickly. And when we talk about value in January 2024, ChatGPT had 1.6 billion monthly visitors. And I think that proves that there is value for everyone. And that's because it's just easy. So LLMs can address a wide range of use cases. It's simple to use. Anyone who can ask a question can do it. In the past, you needed a developer or a data scientist to accomplish this. But today, product managers are empowered to take advantage of tools like ChatGPT themselves. You just need an account. Third, the answers are quick and consolidated. You don't need to search Google for answers. You don't need to read long papers or research or spend a lot of time creating and iterating on it yourself. And fourth, the models are already pre-trained for you. You can start using it immediately. Give it some context, context, rules, and instructions, and you're done. And a few years ago, I implemented the suggestive system based on AI. And the training that we used took us a long time before we were even ready and confident to release it to production beyond beta. And finally, you can easily generate code that you can use in your apps. And this is especially useful if you're worried about uh, data integrity and privacy. Now, AI is changing product management. And how does it do that? It allows us to focus more on strategy and less on tedious manual work. Most of you voted on summarizing and creating PRDs and user stories. And it's not just about automated automation per se, it's about enhancing your capability to make decisions smarter or faster and smarter. We're now able to leverage AI to sift through massive amounts of data, uncover hidden insights and respond to market dynamics in real time. It means it gives you more time to identify the right opportunities to focus on, more time talking to your customers and users, and more time actually using the data than analyzing it. For example, um, still to this day, some people analyze data manually, trying to make sense of customer feedback one by one. And personally, we have hundreds of feedback in the in glass box. So AI is perfect for this. And this is one of the case studies that we will review later. It can analyze thousands of reviews in minutes and identify and highlight areas of improvements quickly for you. It's also dramatically speeds up our data process. Its real value extends into how it transforms product development. It can help you identify trends in customer needs and preferences. Uh, predictive modeling allows us to forecast market trends and customer behavior. And it lets us quickly update our products based on what we learn from action and data, keeping our offering competitive. As an example, we can look at a streaming service that all of you know, that analyzing viewing patterns to suggest personalized content. It's not just, oh, you watch this, so this is what we're going to offer you based on a predefined list, but it improves suggestions and giving users, you and us and everybody using streaming services, more value that's relevant to your preferences. Well, let's look at how, how we can enhance digital DX and uncovering insights with uh, AI. And time for another question. So what type of AI-driven insights would be most valuable for your product development process. And at the bottom here, again, you can see several answers. 
and sticky notes that you can add your own. We'd love to hear what your thoughts here. And if you don't know, that's perfectly fine. That's part of why we're here, to see how we can find out exactly how AI can help us achieve that. User behavior is a very common one. That's our focus on Glassbox. And it, we know that from our customers as well. Uh, ooh, someone took to the, oh, thank you for bringing it back. Where's the other sticky note? It's gone. Oh, I think I found it. There it is. I brought it back. Now, sentiment analysis is different from customer feedback analysis, but I'm glad most of you find, find it valuable because we can see later how easily you can do that. You just need to export your data. Uh, product usage analytics, that's also something we're highly focused on on Glassbox. And personally, we, we use dog fooding, so we use Glassbox on our own product to identify usage for our own users. So I agree completely with what you're highlighting here. And it's nice to see that there are no more uh, that I was able to pinpoint what everyone were looking for. There are no more added um, questions here, answers from all right, so see, I think we got most of the answers, customer feedback analysis, product usage, feature adoption, user behavior. This is very, very helpful. I'm glad to see this. Um, let's go back to uh, our presentation and see how enhancing digital insights uh, with Gen AI can help us. So first thing is don't just push AI for the sake of AI. AI is another tool in your toolbox. Um, you don't need to say, oh, we have AI. When consider all your solutions that you have to solve the problem for the users. Think of the best solution for the for your users. And sometimes a simple button or UX exchange can would be a better solution for your users and much easier to implement. Um, you can use, so before you go, go into implementing AI in your products, so ask yourself some questions. One, can Gen AI make any existing feature you have more friendly or simpler to use? Which of your users' problems can best be solved with AI? And where can we use AI to personalize the user experience, making it much easier with AI today to provide personalization? Uh, we see this especially in retail. What innovative feature is now less complicated to achieve than before you couldn't? These questions help guide you and help you think, and I encourage you to Bring your entire team together, R&D, UX, customer success, other product managers, and think of your uh, current journey and how you can use AI today. And you need to determine the right approach. Uh, the first thing I recommend doing is just use journey mapping to identify pain points. And this is an example of uh, user journey for registration on, on and onboarding. And see where are the main pain points that you have and then think what are the best solutions that you can implement there. And it might not necessarily be AI, but this will be your first step to identify the pain points that the users are having. Then start with ideating solutions and brainstorming. Start with the problem that you want to solve for the step that you identified. Define the value, value for the user and then brainstorm solutions with your team. Um, a lot of times R&D are very good at um, identifying easy to implement solutions and then user experience uh, experts and customer su success experts, they know what the value is for the user because they talk to them all the time. And as product, I recommend you do that the same. So go for that idea solutions. Think of the best ones. Like I mentioned before, it's one tool out of your toolbox. And if AI can provide the best solution there, then you have a green light there and you can move forward. But then you need to evaluate feasibility. So what's the effort? We're implementing it. What's the risk and what's the impact? Um, is it technically feasible to actually achieve for your solution? 
do you have all the data that you need or do you now need to gather more data about your users from external factors? Um, does it need to be compliant with any regulation? And is this aligned with your company's strategy and vision? Make sure that you, you know the answers for these questions before you dive into actually implementing it or, or you're going to go in a spiral and implementing AI and it might not be the best solution and it could be too long to actually get value from you, from you for your users. But let's look at some examples of how enhancing digital experience can be achieved with Gen AI. So these are real world applications. Uh, a fitness app that automatically adjusts workout plans based on your progress and your input and your um, your health data from your phone. AI chatbot that's providing initial customer support, reducing wait times. Intercom has a great product there, I know, um, where it just takes everything from your knowledge base and answers the initial simple questions. So it frees customer support to handle the escalation and the tougher uh, questions that come from users. It can predict shopping needs and suggest interesting products based on previous um, purchases, uh, based on what you search for, what you looked at. And you can use simple language to edit images. So if you wanna remove unwanted elements, just recently I had uh, ChatGPT create a slide uh, title for me, and it added this weird, um text there so i asked a friend that works with adobe and i asked him can you remove that and he just marked that area and said please remove it and adobe just ai just filled in the rest based on the background of the picture so great implementation saved a lot of time it took him literally two minutes just to do that and you can drive better product decisions so it can help you quickly analyze large data sets it can automatically identify user interaction patterns that it will take you a long time to do yourself. You can perform sentiment analysis and feedback analysis. You can create custom reports on the fly. And uh, this is something that we're working on in, uh, in Glassbox. But also, if you just give the data to ChatGPT and you ask it to just create a graph of any kind that you want, it will do that. Um, and you can even create responsive and interactive graphs if you ask it to import certain libraries. And you can ask it to act as a user persona and then have a chat with that user persona based on the information. And it can also help you um, define that specific user persona. Um, a great tip for that is using a custom GPT. Let's look at some practical applications and case studies then at this point. And I encourage everybody, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to just maybe unmute or ask in the chat and I'll try to address it. And before we go in, um, I'd like to ask, in your opinion, what's the biggest barrier in adopting AI within your organization? So there are several answers here. Common one is data privacy concerns, uh, lack of ex ex expertise in your company, um, lack of actionable insights, compliance might be one, depending on the industry that you're coming from. I mean, I see that some of the dots are behind the sticky notes so let's see if i can bring the front oh what did i do yeah now we should see all the dots So data privacy is a big one. Um, before we move forward, I'll, I'll address that in a little bit. So obviously, Glassbox, we deal with a lot of data of customers and their users as well. And we don't want to send that information to ChatGPT or to any other LLM uh, out there. So, But what it can do, it can create code for you to run on your own data and much easier and the code can be very flexible um, according to the needs. So with the right prompt, without giving any customer data, without giving any uh, PII, any user data, you just ask it what you want to achieve with a set of rules. It's obviously a very elaborate uh, prompt. And then you get a Python code back, for example, and you can use that Python code on your own existing data. So that's just one way to uh, work around data privacy concerns. Um, for lack of expertise, what I recommend 
is become the expert yourself. Uh, one thing you can do is create a chat GPT that will teach others how to use chat GPT. Um, create a, um, a library of prompts that people in your organization can use. Create custom GPTs for specific subjects. It could be um, on a specific product. So instead of them coming to ask you sales marketing uh, about a specific product, just refer them to that chat GPT and they can talk to it whenever they want to and get the information they need. Um, it can be about any other uh, expert, I any other subject. Just recently, I created uh, ChatGPT that its whole purpose was to create the perfect prompt for you. Prompt engineering is something that especially anyone that's new to this field doesn't know how to do. So that whole pur purpose of that bot is to create the perfect prompt for you based on a series of questions that it's asking using the uh, CoStar framework that we're going to see uh, a little bit later. Um, I think a limited AI understanding, that's great. Uh, I'm going to give you the easiest tip now, just on the next slide on what to do to get more understanding there. And this is a tip that you can take forward for your organization. So yeah, at this point, um, I'll click the magic button, everyone. Thank you. So how to get started. Uh, I promised limited AI understanding. So the first thing is get to know the tech and the best way to do it Create an account with a Gen AI tool, whichever one that you want. Could be ChatGPT, could be Cloud, could be whatever it is. Could be any of the dedicated ones that they are for creating images, mid journeys, um, Sora when it comes out. Start using it. Experiment daily. Use it on your daily tasks. Use it for fun. Maybe just start experimenting on what it can do. Learn what works for your use cases and what doesn't work so much. And iterate on the prompts that you're using. Uh, improve them. If the response is not as you expected, then just try again, give it more information, give it more rules so it uh, is strict. Um, give it format uh, responses, like tell them how you want the response to be to come back. If you're asking it to create uh, content for you or images, you can tell them uh, I'm creating it for a slide and it's for management. So it will give you the information or the content in one way. If you're telling them that it's a technical slide, that it's for informing highly technical people, then the information and the response you get will adapt based on that. And it will help you really while you're using it, think where you can apply Gen AI in your day-to-day -day and in your product itself. But the first thing you need to do is just start using it. There's no downside to this. And it's very, very fun. So let's look at some practical applications. And summarize PRDs, many of you are doing that already. Just ask it to summarize a PRD and you'll get this prompt uh, later in the toolkit that we'll provide to you at the end of this presentation. You can break PRDs into user stories easily and generate test cases. So that saves a ton of time actually. Uh, draft a UX brief or a sales brief or any marketing collateral that you need based on the PRD or any other information that you want to give it. Competitive analysis, some of you um, already mentioned that in the question that we asked before. It's great at doing that user persona creation and then acting as the user persona. It can generate FAQs from product specifications and user feedback. So you consolidate all of that, feed that to your uh, Gen AI tool that you're using. And it can just act as an FAQ tool where anyone can ask a question. It's great for internal teams when they have questions for sales, when they have when they need a quick answer and chat GPT or Claude or whoever. Um, I think you know by now that my favorite the chat GPT. Um, it can really help um, give them the answers much quicker than waiting for an answer from you and free your time to do actual what your work instead of answering uh, questions on Slack all day. For product managers, if you're looking at external content, so it can help you create posts and content on your product, release notes, um, whether it's for a blog or an online uh, for an online post for LinkedIn or an email, uh, whatever it may be, it can assist in emails and communication to stakeholders and different stakeholders, as I mentioned, if you're talking to management or sales or technical people, it will adapt the message based on the audience that you're talking to. Um, I see there's a duplicate one for the generate FAQ, but it's that strong of a use case. It can help with user research and interviews. So if you have a specific product, you tell them you want to interview a customer or a user and help you at, create questions for that uh, interview or maybe follow up questions based on certain feedback. It's really good with that. 
Um, it can help you brainstorm anything. If you need a soundboard just to talk to someone, um, and it's very positive always, so it's a great uh, quote-unquote person to talk to. So it really helps with brainstorming where you're just not sure where you want to take it and you want to run ideas by it. And it can create visuals with your company's branding. So I just, before this workshop, I created this. I gave him the, I gave ChatGPT a list of the colors, the color palette that we're using a glass box. And I told it that we have a workshop about using AI and, and analytics and everybody here are product people. And he created this nice image for me. And it, this wasn't the first iteration. The first it created the real world image. But I told it, no, I need something for a Google slide. So the imaging and the art style needs to be appropriate. And then it generated this nice little image. And it took me two minutes there. So this is what I mentioned about fun. Um, now let's talk about the COSAR prompt that I mentioned before. So the best prompts are used when you give it as much information as possible. And research has shown that when you give it the context first, then it's giving you better uh, responses and better answers that are more tailored to what you need. So the cold start stands for context. What is the context? What is the background? Who are you? What is the company you're working for? Information about the company, the market, the users, uh, the product, about you, who you are. Um, what is the objective of the task? What are you aiming to achieve? What do you want to do? And we'll see examples later, so don't worry about it. Um, the style that you want it. Is it for um, presentation? Is it a document? Is it an online post? Is it a technical document like a PRD? And what is the tone that you want? You want it exciting for a social post or you want it informative and professional for a PRD, for example, or release notes? And the audience, I mentioned that several times. This is very important because it literally changes the answer and the content that you'll get based on the answer, based on the audience. And lastly, response. What is the response format that you like to get it in? And you can be very elaborate with any of them. And the more information you give it, the better the response that you're going to get. Uh, let's look at some case studies. But before we do that, does anybody have a question at this point? Cool. So we'll wait for the end for some questions. Um, the first, before the case studies, um, I want to ask what areas of product management do you believe AI can impact the most? And it doesn't necessarily have to be within your organization. It can be in general. It can be in your work in a day to day. Um, if you want to add help with career, that can also be relevant for that. These are just some examples that we have. Funnels is, is a very good and strong one. I already see that's gaining a, a lead, a head start. Um, just a sneak peek to what we're doing in Glassbox because it's very related to this. And I, I love it because I'm the user of my own app. So we're using it to highlight uh, insights from Funnels and jobs. Like, why did the user actually drop? It's okay to leave the line. Thank you, Lena. Um, why did the user drop at this? A specific step and what was the root cause that caused them to abandon the funnel that we're using at user interviews i love that you love that use case um it wasn't included in the toolkit but if you'd like i can add it later and the link is an online link so we'll be able to update it and you'll be able to download it again with the prompt for user interviews surveys is a very easy one it's the same use case for content creation so just when you uh, give it the style that you want. You mentioned that it's a survey and the objective. So you want to create a survey very easily accomplished with it. If you have anything to add about the product itself, not necessarily the day-to-day, -day, feel free to add that. But I think we uh, have all the answers here. Use hey, Isaac, we've got, we've got a question in the chat. Yes. How do you use... Uh, chat GPT for user sentiment analysis, or are you referencing creating a custom LLM at the company? Um, so I'm going to show you that in a second. That's a great question. Um, this is um, actually the answer is both. So you can use it in your own chat GPT or a custom one that you have 
um, for the company. It, it's basically, it works the same. The difference is the custom uh, LLM that we have is just have predefined rules, but you can give the same rules to ChatGPT that you work with, and then you'll get the same response. So that's one of the uh, you, the case studies that we're going to see right after this. So I see we have all the answers here. I'm loving it. Thank you, everybody. And uh, as I promised, so this is feedback analysis, but it's very similar to sentiment analysis. Because, and in this case, we incorporated both. So this is actually something that we did at Glassbox. We had over 800 feature requests and support tickets from, I think, two, one and two years. And um, this was a lot. For me to read as uh, I just came to Glassbox two years ago and some of them uh, I wasn't in charge of and I wanted to understand across the entire platform of Glassbox and there are many products of Glassbox. What are their problems? What are their interests? What do they care about? What are they asking about the most? So I just uploaded the Glass to ChatGPT and here's a simple example prompt. That's not the prompt that I use. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have the example of the prompt that I used in the document that I'm going to share. So you can see I'm using as act as a product analyst. I'm giving it context. I'm giving it what is its role that it needs to play as, analyze the sentiment of these customer interactions, categorize them into positive, negative, and neutral groups. This will cover the sentiment analysis part. But I also wanted to identify top problems and feature requests from each category list. And I wanted to list the relevant customers so I can follow up on them, whether if I supported it or whether if I have more questions and I want to interview them, could be any of those. Now, this prompt will work and give you great results, but you're going to have a, um, a specific dedicated prompt just for this that you can use uh, if you want to in the document that we're going to share. Uh, and if you have a follow-up question on this, feel free to just send it in the chat. Um, so let's look at the results that we had. And as you expect, it identified the top problems users are facing in the product. It created a list of the top features that are requested. Now, it can be a top 10, top 5. It depends what I asked it to do. Uh, it categorized all the feedback into sentiment groups, positive, ne negative, and neutral. And it followed up with uh, relevant customers, meaning it gave me the list for follow-up. So I can continue my user research so we can go and talk to them, so we can tell them maybe something's already supported and they, they just weren't aware of it and we can get more information of them. It save us days on manual analysis, but um, I, I, I wanna emphasize the days part. We probably wouldn't have done it manually. Nobody would have gone over 800 plus feature requests and uh, support tickets. Some of them are closed. Um, manually, one person to do this is an impossible job. It literally gained us invaluable insights within minutes for all the product managers in the organization. Uh, I see there's another question uh, in the chat. So how did you upload these requests to ChatGPT just as text or a structured file? So that's a great question. At first, uh, I started with a structured file. It's supposed to work on that, but sometimes it's a little um, glitchy and it didn't work. So I just copied the column and pasted it into ChatGPT, but it's supposed to work with both. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. Either of them can work bad and good for you. If you don't have a lot of data, then you know just try each one of them. If the file doesn't work, um, just give it the, the responses as is. Uh, a lot of times I prefer uploading files because the files have additional columns, like the industry, for example. So in this case, when I uploaded the file, it helped us uh, categorize the request for specific industry, where, where they came from, um, are there how many people are in the company? Um, one to five, five to ten, over fifty, etc. Um, how many active users are for, uh, on average on each one of them? So the more columns you give it, the more information you can slice and dice and ask follow up questions. So both approaches can work perfectly fine. Uh, there's something called as chat CSV. Actually, this is the first I'm hearing about. Um, Love to know more about it if you want to type a little bit on the chat or if you want to unmute yourself and tell everybody, that will be great as well. And a tip when you use ChatGPT, so when you gave it the perfect prompt after going back and forth with it, that's when usually it's good to create a custom GPT so you can save time on the next time you need to do it if it's a recurring thing that you plan on doing. And this is relevant for any uh, use case that you want to use it for. All right, so I'll move over to the um, 
for the next uh, case study. Um, wait, we have another question. Which version of the chat GPT do you use? Um, so I'm using the chat GPT four. Um, uh, so I'll get to the second question in a, in a second. What challenges? So um, sometimes it makes up uh, information, um, not when I give it a set of data, but when I want to create a post or when I'm brainstorming with it, or sometimes it doesn't give me the answer that I'm looking for. So it's making up some stuff. Um, so I, or not making up, that's not the right uh, word, but it's not giving me the answers I'm looking for. So that's when I know that the prompt that I used wasn't accurate enough and there wasn't enough information. So I just focus more and give it a follow-up question and tell them, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking more for answers in this format. A lot of times it gives me very long responses. Like, I don't want to. I wanted to create a bullet list and I create a bullet list full of long uh, paragraphs, each bullet. And I have to tell it, no, the audience is management. So the information needs to be concise and consolidated into a very short bullet each time. Um, those are some of the challenges, but they're easily solved with, um, with uh, additional uh, follow-up question. Uh, of course, uh, CoStar. So... Oh, I see was already answered. Thank you, Kevin. Um, appreciate it. I love this workshop. Um, oh, sorry, I'm still here. So case study number two. So we wanted to do a retention analysis. It's something that wasn't exactly easily accomplished for us. Um, so we had to prepare some anonymized user logins from 2023. So capturing details as um, times and dates of visits of each user. Um, company size, industry, geographic location, um, how many uh, employees were there, and more information. So it was a file with a lot of columns. Uh, we uploaded it to ChatGPT and asked it to standardize some data for us a little bit. So this is an optional step. It depends how your data is structured. But you can actually tell them to, um, for example, if you have uh, users as IDs, so you can tell it, change it to user one, user two, user three, just because it's easier than a string of numbers. Um, and then I used multiple separate pumps because it's a really big, uh, it was a really big file and I needed a lot of answers. And I think this relates to the previous questions about challenges. So when I want an elaborate response, I, I see a problem where I have to break down the, the task that I needed to do. So what I've learned to do is um, and is break it down to, all right, first do this, then do that, after that, do this. So it's we go, it's an iterative process. process. Um, and in this case, we, we use multiple separate prompts for each graph or questions that we had. And we easily generated graphs and data files for each question. So we had a detailed retention graph showing user return patterns over days, weeks, and months. Each one of those was a separate question and a separate prompt that we use. And it's just the same one with a minor adjustment. Um, we had had it perform a correlation analysis, highlighting impact of initial engagement on return frequency. Now, we just uploaded the file, but I just asked it how uh, find correlation with how many sessions the users have for, per day or the time, of, uh, how long the session was with how often or how long it takes them to return. And it provided amazing results for us. Um, regional and company size comparisons uh, for the retention analysis, uh, providing us really a, uh, an insight into how these different areas in, in, uh, are performing, how different uh, size of companies are performing. So it was very, very insightful for us. It saved us hours on manual analysis and the results were presented to different stakeholders in the company. I can tell you it was a really, really good, uh, large success. And we had a lot of follow-up from that. So we created a lot of work, implemented roadmap items, um, worked with customer success and training and uh, marketing and sales to improve how some of our processes work. So it had an impact across the company. If you have any further questions, uh, feel free. The questions are great. Oh, I see a link for chat CSV. Um, we can check it out after uh, we finish with the with the presentation here. Um, on to case study number three. So the first two were about uh, using 
uh, AI and Gen AI as a product manager for my day-to-day -day work. For this one, I wanted to focus about how we implemented an AI solution within the product itself to make our user's life better. So we had a problem. Recorded sessions are time consuming to watch. You can have sessions of 30 minutes sometimes, 20 minutes, even 10 minutes, just sitting in front of the computer watching a 10 minute session and imagine you have to watch a lot of those. So that's very, very time consuming. Um, the value to user. So we, we thought that if we save that, we can save the time giving our users time to focus on improving their product actually, highlighting relevant insights from the for the set from the sessions that they are not gonna watch if we solve this. And they can spend more time doing their other work. Glassbox is just part of their day-to-day -day work and just part of all the responsibilities that they have. So we can if we can highlight the insights, if we can give them the bottom line of what they're looking for without the need to watch all these sessions, um, that will save a lot of time for them and that will bring them the value we hope that will solve the problem. So we brainstorm solutions with product R&D and UX and customer success. And we selected a solution that will summarize a session with Gen AI and generate insights on the session as it relates to the selected filters or the drill down the user came from. So a drill down is when a user is looking at a specific funnel and there's a drop in the funnel and it wants to focus on the users that drop in the funnel. So, um, and it can do this, the solution that we decided to go with, it can do this with across several sessions. It doesn't have to be one specific sessions. So for that, we started with a POC. We extracted the session data, actions, clicks, page views, funnels, everything that we could. There's a lot of session data for each one of our sessions and session replays. And we tested it with ChatGPT. We iterated on the prompt for best results while maintaining flexibility. I still didn't create anything. I just uploaded the information to ChatGPT, gave it a prompt, and saw what summary it can give us and what uh, uh, insights it can highlight for me. Obviously, gave it a role. It had the goal in mind for the user itself. And we released the solution to production within three weeks. And this is a very major um, advantage of AI today. It's very easy to go to production. It's very easy to have something production ready that you can give your users. And the results that we had and that we saw in the data was more sessions were clicked on, but fewer sessions, uh, fewer time was spent on each session. And we had a higher rate of sharing the sessions than we did before. Um, so for us, it was a big success. Um, and we're still going to continue building on GIA internally based on continuous customer needs. We got a lot of feedback there. Um, this is three weeks to go to production and get such an impact in the product was uh, a great achievement. And this is just shows where we are with Gen AI today. This is something that would have been impossible of months to do with an in-house ML solution. Um, now, you ask here, uh, did you do a spot check on the retention patterns and results in general? Um, so I'm, I'm guessing you're asking if I verify the information. Um, so we did do verification. We asked, we had a data analysis person uh, go over the information. Um, we did some initial analysis ourselves in Excel, so it all matched. Then we gave it strict rules that it only can use the data from the Excel that we provided. So it was the data was reliable in that case because we gave it the data set to use from. Now, if I misunderstood the question, please let me know, Fabian. Well, I'll continue for now, and let's see if um, if you do have a follow-up question, feel free to shoot it in the chat. Um, <clears throat> let's see how to create a good prompt, apart from giving you the prompts. So first of all, use the CoStar framework, and you're gonna see it in action, and some of the examples you're gonna see give gen ai a role act as a product manager at company most of the times it knows what company you are if not explain what the company is and what it does you can even if you're using chat gpt4 give it a link of your home page and so we can uh, understand it himself and ask it to check the home page uh, add some context so um, that's what i mentioned the information about the company what you're trying to do what you're trying to achieve be explicit on what the desired outcome this is very important otherwise it might not necessarily be in your head and understand exactly what you're trying to achieve. So the more explicit, the more information on what you want to do and how the format and the outcome should come, the better. 
Um, try adding context before tasks. I mentioned this before, research has shown there are better results this way. And most importantly, in my opinion, is experiment, revise the prompts, iterate, ask additional questions and try again. And once you get familiar with it, you like the results or you see something that you're using it um, constantly, then create custom GPTs for specific use cases. For example, a lot of you mentioned summarizing PRDs or breaking it into, into user stories. So having a custom GPT for that with all your instructions ahead of time is uh, will save you a lot of time on the next time that you wanna um, that you want to do it and split a PRD for specific user stories, for example. Uh, I see another question. Our main barrier to adoption is trust in the data. Am I right in thinking that the strict rules and well-written prompts will mitigate this? Uh, exactly. I'm very, very strict with this. I even tell it sometimes you'll be penalized if you do anything. And I obviously proofread anything. I don't copy and paste anything I do. But the more you uh, limit it and tell them that you must use the information that I'm providing you here, um, you can only answer from the data that you see in this place, um, in, in the data or in the file, whatever it is, um, the better it is at actually um, at actually not making up anything and you can trust the information. And this is also relevant for social posts. The more context and information that you give it, the more it's going to use that rather than um, make up stuff that you didn't write in that uh, post himself. Um, so we mentioned a simple prompt template. Here's a simple prompt. This is for easier tasks, simpler tasks that you don't need a whole uh, co-star framework for. So uh, recommended to give it a role, act as a whatever the role is, data analyst, marketing strategist. If you don't know, one cool thing is you can ask it. What role should you act as? Uh, your task is to whatever the tax is based on the previous information, on the provided information, ensure your output is, and then what you want to do, it should be comprehensive, concise, detailed, whatever it is, and formatted as the desired format, meaning a report, a bullet point, summary, uh, slides, whatever you want it to be. Um, and then usually uh, recommended is to add uh, these content placeholders and just paste whatever content that is here, whether it's the PID, the emails, the long Slack uh, channel that you don't want to read. Um, the slide, yes, that will be available and also the file that you're going to see here. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, the co-star prompt is a little bit more elaborate. So it, it, you can literally copy paste it like this. And this is a general prompt uh, for any use case. So you are, this is the role working on whatever you're working on, improving user engagement, creating a social post, whatever it may be. Again, the more information you give it, the better. You have collected data feedback you need to analyze for informed future development. Uh, again, this part can change. It should have been a, a, a placeholder. Objective, again, act as a whatever the role are. Your task is to give it the task that you need to be. Give it the style, produce uh, a report, um, uh, a, a slide, or a whole presentation, uh, social post format, and you can give them the format based on other um, social posts or viral posts that you're seeing from the best content creators. You can just paste it here and tell them I'd like something in the same format. The output should be styled with headings, bullet points, whatever you need it to be. Um, maintain a tone. So give it a specific tone that you want, professional, um, uh, informal, uh, inform whatever it is throughout your analysis. We're going to see some examples. The audience, again, very important. The response, deliver your finding in a, and then what type of response that you want, a text document, slides, um, just regular bullet points, uh, an email, whatever it is. And um, the last one is not part of the CoStar uh, prompt itself, but it's just a place for you to insert the content as much as you want to give it more context. And let's look at the feedback analysis prompt. So here um, we asked it, you are tasked with analyzing feedback collected over the past year from diverse customer base. The data comprises over 800 feature, uh, feature request and support tickets submitted via multiple channels, including our customer support platform and social media. The feedback is crucial as it represents direct user interactions and their experiences. And the objective, uh, your task is to conduct sentiment analysis on over 800 feature requests and support tickets, extracting ac actionable insights to guide our product development. The style we gave them, the tone, audience that you want, 
and we gave them the explicit explicit response format that I want. Provide your analysis in a structured JSON format that includes the identified problems, so a list of the problems users are facing, and include relevant customers for each problem, detailing customer information for potential follow-up. And we did this for feature requests and for the sent feedback sentiment as well. And you can paste the result here, like we mentioned before, or upload a file. Um, what is the limitation from problem size in ChatGPT? I haven't encountered one yet, <laughs> to be honest. Um, sometimes due to um, high usage, then it says that it can't use it. So I just force it to do it again. I just ask the same question again. Um, so no, I can't actually show the output because some of them contains um, information that's specifically for Glassbox that you see here. Um, in the next, however, uh, workshop that we do, I think it might be a good idea to just have a live um, uh, demonstration, I guess, where we just take one of these, take a use case from the audience, and then we can see it live. But I do encourage you to just take what we're seeing here and copy paste it into the into ChatGPT. Uh, so finally, what you'll get in the attached toolkit, it will be emailed to everyone who attended after the workshop. And um, I think, Rob, maybe we're adding an email as well to the chat. I'm not sure, but we'll email yeah. it for sure. Uh, We're going to so, drop the link in the chat right now so you guys have it. And we'll also send it out via email, too. So uh, you'll get the simple prompt template that you can copy paste. Good for easy tasks. A co-star general prompt template. And then a template for PID summary. One for user stories to break it down. Um, feedback analysis template. A product release template, whether it's a blog, post, internal announcement. Just need to fill in the information. What is your desired output? and a UX brief template. Now, if you have any other templates that you want, we can create them and help you and send it to you. And that is uh, the end of the presentation where we got to the feedback part. And this is where I'd love to get your feedback. If you're thinking of anything else that you would like to add, something that you didn't like, what could have gone better, anything at all that you can add, that would be great. Just drag the dots, the smiley faces and add information in the sticky box. That will greatly help us for uh, future presentations. And if you have any questions, now's the time. Yeah, and feel free to come off mute and ask your questions too. Or if you you want just a uh, message in the chat, that will be great as well. I saw actually a question that I missed above. Um, I did, but I was using a free chat GPT. The data snippet I copy pasted was not too big. I wonder how you feed it 800 problems. Okay, so I'm using chat GPT 4, so it's a paid version, and I didn't see an issue with the information that I gave it. I also uploaded the file itself, so that was much easier. And if needed, you can always tell them that you're going to keep uploading more information and to wait until you're you're done, meaning so I'm going to upload you the feedbacks and the separate responses. Once I'm done, I'm going to tell you I'm done and only then do the analysis. And it will just keep waiting until you uh, upload um, it in separate sections if you encounter a problem or a challenge. Yeah. So um, most of my usage, um, you have some experience using different AI tools. How are they in comparison? Most of my experience is from ChatGPT because it's working good for me. Uh, I can't really comment on the differences between them. I know we have kind of like an A-B test in the company where half of us are using ChatGPT and half are using Claude. So we're going to meet later and see um, how are the experiences different from each audience. Um, but I can't really comment on who's better at the moment. And, but I guess each one is stronger for different use cases. Uh, I joined late. I'm not in the mirror. But this has been super helpful. Thank you. Um, first, let's send you, Rob, can you send the mirror link again for Danny? And maybe you can check yeah. out a little bit. Um, been feeling behind in on how to use ChatGPT. And this gives some great ideas to start with. Thank you so much, Danny. Please check the slides where I mentioned how to get started. In short, just create a user uh, in any of them and start experimenting, start using whether it's for fun or for your day-to-day -day work, to summarize uh, an email, um, help you create user stories, whatever it may be. I can tell you that it helped me write a poem for a friend as well. So that was all rhymes. I'm not a good rhymer. And that was a really great use case. And he loved it. And he only found out several months later.
Um, this is a great session. Love the engagement and delivery. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, my note, number the slides so can see which one the sequence to keep up. That's a great note, Kevin. Thank you so much. I'll note it for next time. You're awesome. And thank you for helping with the response of the co-star above. We have a list of AI tools serving different purposes. So not really, but if you want to send me a message asking for a specific one, what, what's your use case? then uh, I can help you, you look for one. Or if you want a specific use case, I can be a uh, G with ChatGPT. Maybe we can work a prompt together. Uh, do you know what talent and resource time expected budget is required to build a chatbot using LLM and integration with services now or MS Teams or Workday? So um, you're talking about a custom in-house uh, LLM. So we, it's not a lot, to be honest, um, to do that. I'm not sure about the integration with MS Teams. Uh, on that part. But um, like I said, we released uh, Gia to summarize the session replay within three weeks from the ID, from after the POC to production, including testing, including everything. And we didn't have a team of 10 people. I think it was one or two people that were working on it, including the design. Um, it's, it was very simple to implement. So um, I suggest involving R&D in that brainstorming and let them evaluate what is the effort needed on their part. I'm happy you like my suggestion, Lena, of course. Be very explicit with what you want. Tell them I'm going to give you several uh, different uh, feedback. Only when I'm done, I'm going to tell you to stop and give you a task. Do you understand? And then it will respond, yes, I understand. Go ahead and just go at it. Um, like The more rules and explicit instructions you give it the better so if it starts mambling oh that's great thank you no i told you to stop you know just be very assertive with it uh is using chat gpt changing your search engine behavior not really this is where the part where um i i can trust more of the information from google it's it's used um the information to chat gpt is not up to date to today so i'm not using it for a search engine per se but I am using it for summary, summarizing videos or specific websites that I'm looking at that are pretty long. Um, did I get it right that after it right for the user recording analysis, you only uploaded metadata and that was enough. ChatGPT was able to analyze without the actual. Yes, exactly. Um, we didn't upload uh, the video itself. Also because it's, it's not really an actual video, but that's a, how the technology works. So, um, but it did have a visual of how the website looks like and what they did in each in each interaction. So for example, if there's a click on a specific button, it can identify what that specific button is and how it looks like. So one of the insights that we are uncovering here is let's say there's a CTA and the CTA, the call to action, and it's under the fold, it can identify that and especially when it comes to user drops and funnel and then highlight that that was the problem that the user dropped and then can highlight it across several sessions. Of course, thank you, Kevin. So Fabian, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's look at some wish a live demo. Uh, I promise for next time we'll have a, a live demo, we'll run a series of sessions more. Thank you so much for that, I appreciate it. Uh, I would like to see an example. So yeah, that correlates with the live demo. Um, appreciate the feedback here. I wonder if you find a market for different sessions, beginners, advanced users. That's a great feedback as well. We'll take it um, into consideration. This was indeed a more generalized session covering a lot of subjects, kind of like an introduction to how AI can change product management. Um, we can definitely deep dive on each of the subjects a lot more. Um, Great feedback. I appreciate it. I appreciate you liked it so much. Um, awesome. Any uh, any final questions as we start to wrap up? I'm missing the contact information. Uh, what do you mean? You see, um, I can just go back to my name. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want. Of course, thank you, Sade. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Good luck. Cool. Well, thanks everyone Thank for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, Lisa, any any final thoughts or wrap up? That is all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We will share obviously the recording as well. I mean, the the guys from Glassbox will have it as well, uh, so you can rewatch it. Thank you for joining. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks so much, everyone.
Thank you. Bye.